Hello, thank you for asking me to talk today. I'm um, talking about the public's views on and use of antibiotics and how we might be able to um, influence them. In my talk, I'm going to tell you about some surveys that we've done recently with the general public and also some work we've done to determine why the general public go to visit their GP with respiratory tract infections and then move on to give some information about evidence for different approaches to reduce antibiotic use and then tell you about some of the resources that we've developed which are based on cognitive theory. So first of all, let's talk about the public's um, views on antibiotics. Many of the general public still have misconceptions about antibiotics. Although the majority do agree that antibiotics can effectively treat bacterial infections, in this survey that we did in January um, 2014, many still believe that antibiotics are effective against viral infections and also fungal infections and many of these other um, conditions where we know that antibiotics aren't effective, for example, hay fever and asthma. And this lower understanding tends to be in the younger age group and those with lower social grades. Also, um, although the general public believe that most coughs and colds will get better on their own without antibiotics and that they know that they should complete the course and take it correctly. There's still lack of knowledge, especially around bacteria and resistance. So in this um, survey, we asked um, whether they agreed the statement bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics spread easily from person to person and half agreed but half didn't know or disagreed. Also, they don't realise that the healthy people can carry antibiotic resistance organisms. So there's a lot of opportunity to educate the public about antibiotic resistance. So over the past um, 10 years or more, um, we've been working with the general public and doing, and doing campaigns to improve their use of antibiotics. And you may, um, those of you who are um, as old as me, will remember Antibiotic, who came out in 1999. This was then followed by the um, European Antibiotic Awareness Day campaigns and the Department of Health campaigns with the posters and leaflets in general practice. But despite these campaigns, consultations for um, acute cough and cold, although they reduced during the antibiotic campaign, they have slowly increased. And um, in 2011, over 50% of those patients who went to their GP with a cough or cold were prescribed an antibiotic. And in fact, this um, average actually conceals um, a bigger uh, range in behaviour by general practitioners. So the 10th percentile range varied from 32% of patients being prescribed an antibiotic for acute cough or cold to 65%. This study also looked at treatment for um, the sore throat and the range there was 45 to 78%. And with a titus media which in England, um, in, unlike the Netherlands, um, treat a lot of um, coughs of otitis media. 63 to 97% of cases of otitis media were treated with antibiotics in primary care. So there's a lot of opportunity to um, control the use. So why is there um, this increasing use? Well, we've done some work interviews, first of all interviews and then a large survey with the general public to find out about why they went to see their GP with respiratory tract infections. We found that 60% of um, respondents in a January survey said that they'd had a respiratory tract infection in the previous um, six months. And what did they do? Well, actually, um, despite some of the hype that they all go to their GP, the majority do actually self-care at home. 
So they take um, alternative medicines over the counter remedies and take extra rest. But 20% do indeed um, contact um, their GP. So this equates to 11% of the general population visiting their GP with an acute cough or um, a uh, respiratory tract infection every six months. So that is a big burden on the GP's workload. So what do they do and what do they expect when they get there? And why did they go? So they visited their GP because they were worried. I mean, the interviews and the, and the questionnaire survey really did agree um, with each other. And um, half the people said they went to their GP because their symptoms were severe. What do they mean by that? Well, they mean that they had um, pain, um, they, it kept them awake at night. That was one of the major things, that if they couldn't sleep because of the symptoms, they tended to go to their GP. Alternatively, if symptoms had not improved after several days, especially if they'd stayed in bed over the weekend, it hadn't got better, they would then go and see their GP. Interestingly, 9% of the sample said, I usually visit my GP with these sort of symptoms. So there are people who go again and again. So what did this 11% of the population expect from their GP when they got there? Well, half of them expected antibiotics. So in this survey, this would equate to about 5% of the population um, in the last six months going, expecting antibiotics for a respiratory tract infection. But although half of them expected antibiotics, many of them expected other things as well. They wanted advice about self-care. They wanted advice about other treatment they could use um, for the symptoms to rule out more serious illness and also to get some information about how long the infection um, would last. So there is an opportunity to educate the general public about this. Interestingly, 93% who said they'd asked for an antibiotic got one. So do the um, general public trust their GP if they say they do or don't need an antibiotic? Well, interestingly, the vast majority, see here, 88% of this large survey in 2014 said they trusted their GP's advice as to whether they would need an antibiotic or not. Um, a very large percentage also said they trusted their nurse and also their pharmacist. So there's a great opportunity to increase information given to um, the general public about self-care and when they should um, consult. And what is the evidence for this patient-centered approach and this communicating about antibiotics with the general public? Well, there's been several studies um, done. This one um, by um, Nick Francis' group in Cardiff used a booklet um, for uh, parents and carers of children and it explains when, um, how they can look after their child, when they should go with symptoms, etc. And they found that it reduced antibiotic prescriptions um, by half. Um, only 20% of um, carers who went with their um, children had antibiotics compared to 40% without the booklet. And interestingly, and most importantly, that intention to consult the next time um, decreased with the use. There's been other studies in the Netherlands. This study looked at C-reactive protein, a point of care test for the diagnosis of uh, possible lower respiratory tract infections with acute cough and looked at communication skills and improving communication with the patients. And they found that educating with communication reduced antibiotic use and the combination of both the CRP and communication um, was the most effective. So what other um, strategies can we use to uh, reduce antibiotic use? Backup um, or delayed um, prescribing can be used to reduce antibiotic use and patient expectations. We're trying to use the term backup now because delayed we found in work with patients 
They thought that delayed meant that they were definitely going to get the antibiotic, but they were just delaying it. A backup gives more of an indication that it is only taken if necessary, if their symptoms get worse. So a Cochrane review has shown that delayed antibiotics are effective at reducing antibiotic, at, at re reducing antibiotic prescriptions. And um, this is an example of one of the studies in that Cochrane review. Um, it's an English study looking at acute sore throat by Little et al. And if you see in the uh, left-hand group of bars, um, the red bar is um, patients who were given 10 days antibiotic treatment and they had similar outcomes at day three compared to those given no antibiotics in the green bar or a delayed antibiotic in the yellow bar. Satisfaction, which is shown by the next group of bars, was very similar across the three groups. But um, very importantly, if you look at this next group of bars, um, whether the patient thought antibiotics were effective for sore throat was much higher in those who were given immediate antibiotics and whether they would go to the GP the next time they had a sore throat is also much higher if um, you give immediate antibiotics. So once you give an antibiotic, expectations are raised. But if you give a delayed, you reduce expectations and reduce future consultations. So what percentage of the public are actually in favour of this delayed antibiotic prescription? Well, a survey in 2014 was quite interesting because we asked them whether they were in favour, strongly in favour or um, strongly opposed to being offered a delayed antibiotic prescription after fully describing what it was. And the general public seemed to be equally um, split between whether they um, favour the um, strategy or whether they oppose it or they don't know. So there's a lot of opportunity to increase understanding about it and increase use. But if it is, if it is used, this data shows that we do need to explain exactly what it is to our patients. So now that I've described some of the evidence, um, what can we do um, to fit together this evidence and change behaviour um, in general practice? Well, we've produced a toolkit, um, the Target Antibiotic Toolkit. It stands for um, Treat Antibiotics Responsibly Guidance Education Tools. Um, we've developed it with the Royal College of General Practitioners and it's available free and all the resources are there to use on the RCGP um, website. And it has background information. It's got information for commissioners who can then take the resources and do workshops. It's got leaflets to share with patients, audit toolkit, um, links to uh, national antibiotic guidance, um, links to training resources, e-modules that we've developed with the RCGP and um, also a self-assessment um, checklist that we can be used to um, see what strategies are being used by commissioners and GPs locally and improve them. So the um, toolkit is based on the theory of planned behaviour. Now the theory of planned behaviour um, looks at the different things that influence our behaviour, our intention to do something and in this particular instance, we're talking about, I want to use antibiotics responsibly. Whether I'm um, a GP, um, a consultant in the hospital, or a patient. And it's affected, your intention to, to do that is affected by your personal attitudes, the subjective norms or your peers' values and, and influences on you and perceived behavioural controls, and those are barriers, and they can be perceived, they don't have to be definite, it's just the fact that um, patients and um, doctors um, believe that they are correct, or nurses, nurse prescribers and pharmacist prescribers. So I'm going to go through these in a little bit of detail and say what we can do to influence these, and um, what you can do in your own practice. So first, looking at personal attitudes. Personal attitudes are affected by two things. But firstly, 
um, outcome beliefs. And so that means my responsible use of antibiotics will make a difference to patient, it's important. So you actually have to be able to persuade um, GPs, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, patients that their responsible use will actually make a difference to resistance because if they don't think it will, they won't change their behaviour. So what have we done to influence this? Well, within the target um, toolkit, there's a presentation with background information about the fact that resistance um, influences outcome and that if they change their antibiotic use, they can change their, change their own antibiotic resistance and their use influences resistance. The next thing that affects um, personal attitudes is rewards, personal rewards for your behaviour. So what can we do um, to actually convince um, prescribers and users, if I prescribe responsibly, I will be rewarded for it? Well, for GPs, one of the major things is consultations, and I've mentioned that several times already in my talk, but in this um, study that I've shown already, practices who reduced prescribing in this GPRD study actually experienced a reduced consultation rate and patients who were given a delayed antibiotics have less expectation for antibiotics in the future. So patients can be retrained not to expect antibiotics and therefore they'll have a lower consultation rate and that will reduce pressure. So next we want to move on to the subjective norms, the peers' values. So my peers also believe in responsible prescribing. So how do you influence this? I think the most important thing is that it's a team approach and this has been shown in many other um, interventional studies and it's important to, in, to invite the whole practice team to a target workshop to describe their antibiotic use and what the whole team can do about it. But it's not just the team, you have to um, the um, doctors and patients need to understand that it's not just the GP practice, out of hours, dentists and vets are all working to reduce antibiotic use and we are working with all those different sectors of um, the antibiotic users. And also nationally, EU and worldwide, there are many other um, strategies and campaigns going on. You've probably heard about the Antibiotic Guardian campaign, um, the Antibiotic Action by the BSAC and European Antibiotic Awareness Day. They all increase um, peer pressures and peer beliefs on the importance of responsible antibiotic prescribing. What else can we do to influence um, our whole generation of prescribers. Well, one of the things, oh, sorry, I've gone wrong there. Okay. okay, so I did the, did the wrong slide. Hold on, I think, hold on. Um, I've got my slides in the wrong order here, so I moved on to the wrong one. Okay. Um, Uh, right, I lost my flow. I was in full flow then. It's going well. Okay. Um, so now I can't remember what I said. Okay. Um, Let's go back. Okay. Okay. Go no. Back no. 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 That's all right. That's fine. Um, so do you want me to go? Okay. So. Okay. So I'll. So instead of talking about the future generations, okay, well, you can cut that bit. And um, so um, what else influences our peers' values and our peers' opinions about antibiotic use? Well, motivation to comply affects the subjective norms. I want to prescribe responsibly because my peers would want me to. So again, this is peer pressure. And this can be attained via audits in the practice and um, in the whole CCG or area 
or country, and that everybody wants to, is, is aiming towards a single goal. And one of the things that we're doing um, and is going to be coming forward now is um, a target for hospitals and um, GP antibiotic users, prescribers, to um, reduce their antibiotic use. And they'll be wanting to reduce their total antibiotic use and the percentage of the total where they prescribe cephalosporins, quinolones and coamoxiclav. So this um, graph demonstrates up on the vertical axis the total antibiotics um, used by all the practices throughout the country rec um, represented by a light blue um, dot and the percentage of the total which are cephalosporins and um, quinolones and the dark blue ones are one particular CCG. The red line on the graph shows the 11% target for percentage of the total that um, it's going to be the target for GP practices to get at or the whole area to reach for 11%. As you can see, there's many practices to the right of that uh, group. And this, um, this sort of data can be used to show practices. So for instance, you can say, you can indicate to a practice like I have here with the arrow, look, this is your practice. Although you've got very low total antibiotic use and you're doing really well, your percentage of that, that are cephalosporins and quinolones, are still, are still high and you need to reduce that. And actually getting them to talk about it in the practice and discussing how they're going to reduce their antibiotic use um, is very powerful and influences um, societal um, and um, practice norms. So let's move on to perceived behavioural controls. So first of all, it's self-efficacy. I have the confidence to prescribe antibiotics responsibly. And this is really for doctors around and nurses and pharmacists around knowledge and guidance about when they can, should prescribe an antibiotic and when they shouldn't. And so um, the guidance is really important for this because it gives um, can be referred to, we have the guidance and it can be um, printed out onto five pages and it can be referred to very simply and it comes with a very large um, evidence base and rationale and it can be used by trainers with trainees. But the important thing is that it has to be available to all members of the practice and out of our staff so that patients don't move on from one doctor to the other. Um, there are also resources that are available on the Target website as well, which can help to increase understanding about um, antibiotics. So what about patients? Here you want patients to be able to think, I have the confidence to use antibiotics responsibly, and this is the confidence to self-care for their symptoms. So as I said, patients go to their GP because they're worried about the severity, they're frightened they're going to get worse. And so you need to give them the information to um, be able to self-care. And therefore, with patients and GPs and pharmacists, we've developed this patient information leaflet. It's called treating your infection at the front, at the top, um, because we don't want to mention antibiotics really early on because that doesn't make, so it prevents them being made special. So um, it can be personalised and so each bit can be added to by the GP saying whether they're giving um, antibiotic ad self-care advice or a delayed antibiotic advice. Um, it has a column about how long each of the infections, which can be ticked, usually lasts. So that educates the patients about when they can, when they should consult. It also gives information about safety netting, when the patient should go to their doctor um, with severe symptoms or contact um, NHS um, direct and it's got the telephone numbers for that. Also, it's got details to fill in for a backup prescription for the GPs to use and indicate when it should be collected and where. And then finally, it gives some information about antibiotics and resistance 
and ideally this would be shared with the patient and discussed. And it is important that this leaflet isn't just given out, it's shared and discussed. But it can, it is a way of bringing the um, consultation um, to an end. So what else, how else can we educate the general public? One important thing is to educate our future generation of prescribers. And so the eBug um, resources have been developed for that. There are a series of resources and they're now available in um, 25 different languages. And there are um, packs for a junior school, a senior school pack, and now a pack for 15 to 18 year olds, which cover antibiotics um, and vaccines and microbes and they're for use in the um, classroom. There are also, the website has games and resources for students. So what does the um, pack cover? Well, it covers, um, it's very broad, so it covers microorganisms, useful and harmful, but most importantly, it covers the spread of infections, because if we can reduce the spread of infections in our children and young adults, we can actually reduce antibiotic use for viral as well as bacterial infections. It also has information on food hygiene, sexual transmission and farm visits. And then it's got prevention of infection and the import covers the importance of vaccinations because this is a huge um, opportunity to reduce infections and antibiotic use through, antibi through vaccinations. And then it covers antibiotic use and how to use them responsibly. So finally, there are going to be many external factors that have to be overcome to, um, to help GPs use antibiotics responsibly. And the main thing with general practitioners is time and forgetfulness. And so one of the things that is really useful is computer reminders for GPs um, to add to their, to their computers. So if you can have a reminder to give out the leaflet or a reminder to use the delayed or backup prescription, that works extremely well. Um, forgetfulness can be um, helped by um, nudging them to use antibiotics responsibly by using the posters in the waiting room and in the surgery. And also there's videos on the website for um, patient um, areas. And these obviously also um, educate the um, patients before they come in and can be used as a prompt by the GP. You may have seen, for instance, you may have seen the posters outside suggesting that we are using antibiotics responsibly. And um, you know, this is what we're trying to do in our surgery. So in conclusion, Tactics to improve prescribing must therefore be multifactorial. I'm often asked, which bit of the toolkit should we use? Well, actually, you shouldn't use just one bit. You should use all the bits. So go to the website, um, use the, um, the PowerPoint presentation. It can be used as a workshop setting with, with, different, with several practices, it can be used with single practices. There's also an e-module. There's lots of teaching um, modules on the website and then, as I say, other um, information for trainers and commissioners about how to take everything forward. So if we do use all the resources, hopefully when the patients have their um, cold or cough, flu, they'll take care, not antibiotics. So I'd just like to thank um, the target team all those involved in developing the target materials, including the RCGP, the BSAC, many of the other societies who've been involved and individuals, the GPs and patients involved in the evaluation interviews, the Ipsos Mori team, and the eBug team at the primary care unit. So thanks very much.